Hello and welcome to this video, Gareth here from tastitudes.com. In the last video, I demonstrated my design process and how I come up with my design ideas. Now, once I feel I have what I need and I'm ready to take these ideas off the page and develop them on the computer, what programs do I use? What is the best practice for print design? Now, as a freelance designer in the industry, I have to use various creative tools to get a particular job done. I may visit many design agencies over a course of a few months and I am expected to know how to use the programs in the correct way. Depending on the project, I may have to create or work with design created by others, so it's important I know how to use the right software in the right way for the right task. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how to use Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign in the right way to create professional design for print. So to put it all into context, I will be referring to the documents we will be designing later on in this course, the business card, the letterhead and the 12 page brochure. So to develop the design ready for print, I will be using Adobe InDesign, but I will also be using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator to create various photo and illustrative elements featured in the print design. Now in my experience, if you are creating design for print such as a business card, letterhead, flyer or multi-page brochure, then you really should be using Adobe InDesign for the main layout. This is unquestionably the program you use when you create design for print. Now, of course, there are exceptions. If you're creating design for a poster, a t-shirt, a book cover, a simple sticker, basic design that only covers one page, then of course you can create this in Photoshop or Illustrator. But when it comes to more sophisticated print design, like a 12-page brochure, you really want to use InDesign. All the agencies and design companies I have worked at use InDesign and expect you to know how to use it. Now some designers may argue and say that you can create a business card and letterhead just as easy in Illustrator as you can in InDesign. And I would not necessarily disagree, though it's important to keep in mind what each program was designed for and also the specific tools available in each program. Adobe Photoshop, as we know, is a raster image manipulation program. We only want to use this program to edit and manipulate images. Adobe Illustrator is where we build up intricate artwork and illustrations using vectors. Yes, Illustrator does have some tools and is set up in a way to allow us to create basic print layout but it currently lacks some of the most basic and crucial desktop publishing tools that exist in InDesign. Now, Adobe InDesign is a desktop publishing program. From its inception, it was designed to compete with other leading desktop publishing products to create publishing for print. Since its introduction into the market back in 1999, InDesign has become one of the most powerful and popular desktop publishing tools on the market. So with all that said, Let's take a look at some examples to see how these programs were used in their respective context. So with the project folder open, I'm going to navigate to the first folder, finished examples. I'll open this and then open up the ID Works Docs folder. I'll select all three InDesign files and open with InDesign. Now, if you're new to this course and wish to follow along, you can get these documents in the project folder. Link is in the description. So the first document we have here is the business card. If we look closely over on the right, we can see the page layout of this document in the pages panel. Here we have the front and back. If you cannot see your pages panel, you can come up to window, scroll down and activate the pages panel from there. Now in InDesign, we are currently looking at it in preview mode. If I now press W, we will enter into normal mode and we can see the guides such as the bleed and the inside margin. If I press W again, we can go back into preview mode. So starting with the front, we can see that this is a fairly simple graphic. Here we have the logo. On closer inspection, if I select this element with the selection tool, we can see that this is grouped together. Now if I right click and choose ungroup, I can separate the group into its individual elements and take a look at what makes up the group. So if I click off to deselect, with the selection tool, I can click each part and we can see here that these are actually vector elements, as we can see the points that make up each shape. 
Now, Adobe InDesign is quite similar to Illustrator, where you can actually draw and create vector shapes. If we look in the menu here, we can see that just like in Illustrator, we have the pen tool, which works and behaves in the exact same way. Now, if I come back to the project folder, come back to the main folder and navigate to the project assets folder, and in that I'll open the branding folder and open the branding file, and we will see the file open in Illustrator. So here we have the main brand elements showing the various logo instances, the font, the brand color swatches, and the pattern. So the main branding was originally created and composed in Illustrator. Now back in InDesign, we have the same logo. Well, this logo has been copied in Illustrator and pasted directly into InDesign. Now, as mentioned earlier, InDesign can manage vector graphics. So pasting any vector composition from Illustrator into InDesign will work just fine. And we will be learning more about this later in the course. Now, if we look at the back of the business card, we can see the type setting some line strokes, and the flat base color, all of which have been created here in InDesign. If I press W to activate normal mode, this time we can see the text boxes, as well as other guides. Now, if we look closely in between the line strokes, we can see we have another element here, this pattern. If I select this pattern element with the direct selection tool, come over to the right and activate the links panel, we can see that this is a linked element. This is in fact a link to a file called pattern gray pantone.ai. AI, well, that's an Illustrator file. So if I right click this and click edit with Illustrator, upon click, the linked file will open in Illustrator. And here we can see the pattern. Now, this pattern has been made specifically in Illustrator using the tools available to us in Illustrator. For now, I'll close the document and come back to InDesign. So in this instance, InDesign was used to set up the main composition, create the solid color background and the type setting. The logo has been copied from Illustrator where it was originally created and pasted into InDesign as compatible vector shapes. On the back, we have the pattern sample, which was developed in Illustrator. Now, because the tool to create the pattern is unique to Illustrator, the pattern could not be simply pasted into InDesign, like with the logo. So this had to be placed in as a link. So the next document is the letterhead. Just like with the business card, if we look closely over to the right, we can see the page layout of this document in the pages panel. Here we have a front and back. On the front, we have the type setting. And again, the logo has been copied and pasted from Illustrator. Now, if I press W to activate normal mode, here we can see the page grid setup, this being a grid of four columns. Here we can see how the type and logo are set in the grid. On the bottom of the page, we can see color shapes, which have been created using the pen tool. Turning to the back, we can see more color shapes and strokes made here in InDesign. We have the logo and also the pattern. Just like with the business card, this pattern is a linked image originally created in Illustrator. So in this instance, just like with the business card, InDesign has been used to set up the main composition, create the solid colors and the type setting, and Illustrator was used to develop the pattern and it's been linked in. So next comes the brochure. Now this is a particularly complex document. If we look over to the right, we can see the layout of this document. We can see it consists of 12 pages. So starting with the cover, this has a series of flat colors and showcases the logo copied from Illustrator. Next, we have the first opening spread. So if I press W to activate normal mode, here we can see the grid and how the type fits into it. Now, unlike the previous documents, in the brochure, we also have an image. This image has been modified in Photoshop and is linked into the document. If I select this image with the direct selection tool and come and activate the links panel, we can see that this is one of many linked images contained in this document.
So if I continue to scroll down through the document, we will see that each spread follows this system. All images are linked in, which have been modified in Photoshop. We have the pattern placed in on each spread created in Illustrator, and all type, solid color, and stroke elements have been created in InDesign. Now, if we look closely in the bottom left of the right corner of the pages, we can see the page numbers. Well, this has been set up using master pages in the page panel. This is one of the automatic features in InDesign that makes it very easy to produce multiple page documents. So what I have demonstrated there is the industry standard way of using the programs. We should really keep in mind the strengths of each program and use them to their advantage and bring the elements together in a way the programs allow and have been designed for. Later in the course, as we create the documents you saw in this video, you will see firsthand how each program is used in its own right to build the finished design. So that's a brief discussion on the right programs to use when creating sophisticated design for print. So now we are ready to start to create the business card, letterhead and brochure. Next, we are going to move into the second section of this course, design and artworking. In the next video, we will be starting in Adobe Illustrator and looking at the role that software has to play in the development of the design. As stated in this video, various software have various tools in order to create a specific design element. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can create infinite patterns in Adobe Illustrator. We will be learning how to create and prepare the pattern to use in our print design. See you in the next video.